to my channel. I am finally back with a hair tutorial. I know it's been a hot minute because I've had some other videos like beauty school series, my favorite products, things like that. I hope you enjoy videos like that, but I am so excited to be back in the salon doing a hair tutorial. So today we are going to be doing my friend Mariah. She's been in a few of my videos before. We are going to be doing beaded weft extensions, highlights, and blending extensions. I focused a lot about tape-ins in most of my videos, but I've been getting a lot of requests to do a beaded weft tutorial. So I will be doing that today, teaching you how to match the client's hair to the extensions, blending the extensions, toning the extensions, all of that fun stuff. So if you are interested in watching this, then stay tuned and let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I feel like I need to do more videos focusing on extensions because I get a lot of questions about those. So over the next few months, I will be doing more videos highlighting different methods, different types, all those fun things. And don't judge me today, I literally didn't even brush my hair, so I look like a hot mess. But anyway, if you guys wanna watch this, then stay tuned. Okay, hello you guys. I feel like it's been so long since I have done a voiceover, so I am just going to watch this video alongside with you and voice it over. <laughs> so here are the tools that I need for beaded wefts. It's the hair, the beads, the metal clamp tool, the string, the shears, my comb, and my needle. So I will show you guys how I do this. These are just the things I like to use. This is the way I like to do it. If you do it differently, then that's totally fine. There are many ways to do this method and each one of them are great. This is just how I like to do it. So I start off by doing a horseshoe parting on my client. And look at that hair, it looks so amazing, doesn't it? It's so awesome. Um, anyway, so I am actually doing these extensions before I color her hair. And the reason being, I like to do beaded wefts before I color because you can tone the hair with your color in the bowl when she's like laying back in the shampoo bowl and it just makes it really, really easy. Oh my gosh, my dog just jumped up on my bed. Hi, Benny. Hi, Benny. Anyway, sorry about that. So as I said before, I am going to be coloring her hair after we put these in. Since these aren't tape-ins, they don't have any tape, any glue, it's totally safe to wash the hair right after installation. So I am going to be coloring after I install these and then we will wash her hair. And that way I can tone the extensions with her hair all at once. These extensions actually come a really pretty blonde. They actually don't need to be toned, but I'm gonna do this for the purpose of the video so that you can see that I can tone her hair all at once. So I am doing the beads all across her head as you can see and I did a close-up shot a little later on so you'll see that a little better but you basically string the string through the beads like a clothesline and then as soon as that's done you're going to sew the hair on. So as you can see right here I'm just sewing that hair on. Right here it's a little further away so it's harder to see but I do do a close-up shot here in a minute so you'll be able to see it a little more in depth. And when I'm stitching those corners, I make sure to do about four or five stitches just to make sure that those corners are extra secure because they are the first pieces of the hair that will pop up when the beads start to slip or when your client's extensions start to grow out. Those corners are very fragile, so you want to make sure that they're sitting down completely flat against the head. And then on every other bead, I usually do about two or three stitches, just making sure that the corners have a little more stitching just to make sure they stay in place. As you can see here, I've done a few more stitches. I'm starting to get that first row all sewn in. You can see my mouth just hanging open. <laughs> it's such a good shot. <laughs> so anyway, I'm just continuing on. I hope you guys can tell what I am doing. Like I said, I have a few shots coming up that are a little more in depth and you can see it a little closer, like right here, for example. So you can tell that I have some beads about an inch apart and the string is being strung through each of them. So you have the bead on your tool and you loop it through the little section of hair that you're using and then you have that string and you're just going to loop it through that bead with your needle making sure it's very clean you don't want any hair caught in it and then you want these beads to be horizontal so the first bead is kind of like straight against the head and then like I said these want to be horizontal so I took my tool and I twist it that way it's all going in the same shape and it's going to create 
a really nice way for those beads to lay with the string. And that probably makes no sense, so hopefully you can tell just by watching this video. But I will tell you guys, beaded wefts are practice makes perfect. When I first did these, I didn't love them. It frustrated me. It took me a few tries to really get the hang of it. And now I love doing beaded wefts. So I definitely recommend practice, practice, practice. Whether it's on a mannequin or a friend or a client, you will get the hang of it. And if you are used to sewing at all or you took home ec, then you will be totally fine because it's the same thing. <laughs> And I would say the key to stitching right here is tension. You want to make sure that you're pulling your needle tight, getting the tension in there so you have a really tight, clean stitch. And I always tell my clients, I am so sorry. I know that this method hurts a little more than tape ins, but it's worth it in the end. Take an Advil, you'll be fine. And right here, I am just tying it off a few times um, just to make sure that it's really secure and tight against that corner. And then we are going to move on to the next row. Okay, so we have three rows of beaded wefts right in here, and this is our before, and now we are going to mix up our color and get to highlighting. Okay, so we are going to be using Redken Flashlit, and this is one of my favorite lighteners, as you know if you have watched any of my videos in the past. And I am using 20 volume, and then I'm going to be doing an eighth ounce of Olaplex, and I'm just going to whisk that all together. Alrighty, and I wanted to give you guys a nice little shot of our before. So as you can tell here, she has a dimensional blonde. We have some dark throughout. And this is an interesting color because if you guys remember any of my videos with her in the past, she has been all sorts of colors, every color of the rainbow. We have done red, dark brown, dark brown ombre, balayage. Now we are finally going back blonde. So we are actually still kicking through some of the red in her hair. The funny thing about red is it fades extremely fast, but it holds in the hair forever. So if you put red in your hair, just know you're going to be lifting through those tones five or six sessions afterwards. It's crazy. So I did a bit of a different weaving pattern just since I have her extensions in. I did a mohawk down the back with foils and then I'm meeting in the middle and doing foils up the side meeting in the middle like I said. And then I did a little rectangular section for her bangs and I'm going to do two slices back to back for her money pieces and then just highlight after that. And that's just going to make it very bright around her face and make it, you know, stand out, give us those money pieces that we all love. All right, let's do some hair painting. So lately I have been using a color paintbrush to do my hair painting. I saw this on Instagram kind of going viral and I was like, that's so dumb, I'm never gonna do that. And then of course I had some paintbrushes laying around the salon some, from some projects we've been working on and I was like, I'm gonna give it a shot and now I'm obsessed. <laughs> so I am just painting on as you can see and then putting a foil on it folding it up and then letting it process. And the reason I am hair painting underneath here is because she has quite a bit of dark and red remaining color under here and I just wanna knock all of it out in bigger sections rather than highlighting and leaving subsections. So I am going to hair paint to help me with that. And as you can see, she has that dark banding all throughout and then she has about two or three inches of her natural regrowth, which is like a level eight. So she's got all sorts of crazy tones in there. And I know we are going to get some red when we lift through this. So that's going to be fun. But anyway, I really like using a paintbrush. It's been really beneficial because I feel like it blends it really well and it does some of the work for you. I feel like it looks really natural, really nice, and it paints on really nicely too. You guys know I love my Fermar brushes and I still use those all the time, but I have been loving the paintbrush recently. And here's a little trick I like to do when hair painting is I will use my board and I will just put a few foils on it and then use the board as my base and I will just feather up doing the V's and feather into where I want to put the lightener. And the board is really great because it just gives me a really steady um, workspace to go off of. And then sometimes I will weave and then balayage or sometimes I will just take a section as a slice and hair paint. And this is one of my favorite ways to paint is I just like paint it on the hair. I have gloves and then I just like 
smush it between my fingers and blend upwards. And tension is key right here. You wanna make sure you're holding it really tight. You wanna make sure you're blending, blending, blending because that is key. And I feel like no matter what, that gives me a really nice soft transition. And so that's the way I end up hair painting most of the time. I've noticed just watching myself do this that I like to pat the hair. I don't know if that makes sense, but I'll take my gloves and kind of like pat it in and then I blend with my fingers and then I'll pat again and then blend. And I feel like it just really helps blend it all together very nicely, but that's just something that I end up doing. You don't have to do that. That's just what I do. <laughs> So I just took all of her foils out, 113 foils later, and we are ready to tone. So right here I am mixing up one ounce of 8V and one ounce of 8N, shades EQ. And this is going to target all of her blondes. She lifted to about a level 8, and she's a little bit warm. She has some golden tones in there, but then she's also kind of yellow too. So the V is going to counteract those, and the N is going to make it a little more, more neutral so it's not too icy. And where we balayage and in other areas as well, she did lift a little bit red. It's wherever she had that dark brown color and we are lifting through it and getting red. So I am mixing up a 6GN, which is a green neutral, to help counteract those pieces. So after rinsing her out, I am now applying the 8N, 8V, and I'm just going to mix that into every single piece of her hair, toning everything that I can. And then this is where it comes in handy that I already have her extensions in because I can kind of run that toner through the ends of her extensions. And like I said, this color of extensions is actually really pretty. They didn't actually need to be toned, but it's kind of nice to glaze them with the similar toner that I'm using on the top of her hair because that way it will just blend 100%. And that's a good way to make sure that the color you're doing on your client natural hair matches their extensions as well and most of the time I will just use purple shampoo but since we're toning it here it's going to tone the extensions as well and it's going to make sure it's a nice pretty blend and after I rinse that toner out I am now doing the 6GN just everywhere else that I feel like needs to have that green tone to help counteract the red which is mostly a little bit around her hairline and underneath her extensions where we balayaged and this 6GN is awesome because it has the green base but also a neutral so it doesn't go too green and muddy. And that's what I'm doing everywhere else. And then I will rinse her out and put her in an Olaplex treatment. to say right here I know that you can see that underneath here she still has a few different colors going on like her natural regrowth she still has a little bit of banding of dark but this is a color correction we are going from red 
through dark color trying to get blonde again so we know that it is a process and we will be doing another session to even it out once again <laughs> but for our first session going back blonde we are pretty dang impressed with the color we got and we are so happy with it this video I hope you enjoyed it you guys probably recognize Mariah from a few of my videos she's been red dark caramel and now blonde again so we are finally lighter for summer we added these beautiful new extensions and they feel so good they are beaded wefts I hope you enjoyed learning how to do those let me know what you guys think in the comments below this was a talk through video with a voiceover sorry not a talk through this was a voiceover video if you guys want to talk through video in the future if you feel like you learn more that way let me know it is hard sometimes in the salon because there's blow dryers and it's loud so voiceovers are usually easier but just let me know what you think and just let me know in the comments thank you so much for watching have a good day subscribe yes don't forget to subscribe <laughs>